Welcome back to Study in Australia TV. I'm Tanil and I'm excited to show you some of the smaller and slimier creatures of Australia. This episode is devoted to Australian amphibians. Amphibians are cold-blooded, meaning they keep warm from external heat sources, much like lizards. This group includes frogs, toads, newts, and salamanders, but we are going to focus on frogs. Amphibians have a biphasic lifestyle. This means they have two different stages of life. The first is an aquatic, gill-breathing, larvae stage. The second is a terrestrial, lung-breathing, adult stage. There are 240 species of amphibian in the Australian wild. Frogs make up all 240 species. Australian frogs have proven to survive in a vast range of habitats. Although adult frogs have lungs, they can also breathe through their skin. This is known as cutaneous gas exchange, and it can help them regulate their moisture level. The biggest threats to frogs are from habitat destruction, pollution, climate change, and disease. A simple way to help is avoiding the use of chemicals or insecticides in your garden, specifically near any water source, as this can be a very common place for frogs to reside and you don't want to accidentally harm them in the process of trying to keep a nice garden. Tree frogs. Tree frogs account for 78 of the 240 species of frogs in Australia. Despite the name, tree frogs aren't always arboreal, meaning to live in a tree. The arboreal tree frogs are typically very small as they live under leaves and need to have their weight supported by thin branches. Tree frogs have a bone called the terminal phalanx, which is the last bone in their toe and shaped like a claw. They also have pads on their feet to help them climb with ease on the rough bark of a tree, as well as smoother surfaces. The tiniest tree frogs are even smaller than 2.5 centimeters long, and the largest tree frogs are the first species I want to introduce you to. White-lipped tree frogs, also known as the giant tree frog, a very appropriate name for it. It is the largest tree frog in the world. Females are the larger of the two sexes with a length of 14 centimeters. This is about the size of my hand. They are commonly a bright green and can also have red-brown shades depending on the temperature. A white stripe runs along the frog's lips and down its neck. They also have fully webbed toes, but only partially webbed hands. These gentle giants can be kept as pets in Australia, but only with the appropriate permit. Green tree frogs. These are also able to be kept as pets, like the giant tree frogs, and they have similar coloring Typically a bright green color, although occasionally a blue or yellow specimen has been found that lacks the opposite color pigment in its skin. The green tree frogs are up to 12 centimeters long, not including their limbs, and they have long limbs that stretch up and tuck in neatly when they sit and propel them upward when they jump. They love to climb too, using their long limbs as well as their gripping pads on their feet to easily scale smooth surfaces. They like to be in places where it is cool and moist, which is why they can be sometimes found in water tanks, pools, drain pipes, and mailboxes. They can also use these sorts of spaces to increase the volume of their croak during mating season by creating a loud echo of their voice. They are very helpful in the garden by eating moths, insects, spiders, mice, and other small animals. And they are great hunters at night, previously being known to catch a small bat as they fly out in a dark cave. Green and golden bell frogs. These frogs are marked with bright green and brown stripes and blotches across their dorsal side. They are native to Eastern Australia and are one of the examples of tree frogs that aren't arboreal. They are a ground dwelling species. Females can be up to 11 centimeters. Males are considerably smaller, roughly seven centimeters. 
This species of frogs are classified as vulnerable, which means they are endangered. The Australian red-eyed tree frogs. Not to be mistaken for the South American namesake, Australian red-eyed tree frogs spend most of their time in trees, mainly only coming down to breed after heavy rain. They have webbing on their feet and their legs are very long. These features make them strong swimmers and they have powerful hops. They will propel themselves at insects on high branches and land meters lower. Males are just over six centimeters and females are slightly larger, just under seven centimeters. Blue mountain tree frogs. Blue mountain tree frogs are river dwellers, only grow up to six centimeters and are rarely seen. They easily hide under rocks due to their smaller size and have agile movements between the water and the land. They are an olive brown to lime green color. They have brown black stripes run from its nose to its tail along either side of its body. They also have red shades in their thighs and sides. Desert tree frogs. The desert tree frog is the most widespread frog species in Australia. It is also known as the naked frog because of its unique translucent skin, which makes the organs visible from the outside. They are a fawn gray or brown with a pinkish hue, have gold and black markings along their body, and they grow up to 4.5 centimeters. The call they make sounds like a seagull with a deafening screech. Unlike most desert frogs, they don't create burrows to stay cool. They will hide themselves under rocks, loose barks, or holes in the tree trunks during the day. And they come out at night to search for food. These frogs will squish themselves into rock crevices in groups, and they swap spots to allow each member of the group a chance at the middle position where it is most warm and moist. They often live close to our homes as they like the moisture of our sinks and drain pipes. Females lay up to 300 eggs. After two to four weeks, the brown tadpoles will begin becoming frogs. During this middle stage of life, they are referred to as froglets, and they can leave the water before they lose their tail. Corroboree frogs. These are not tree frogs. Majority of these frogs live in Kosciuszko Park, residing in grasslands and alpine areas. They can bunker down to survive snow and low temperatures, which is very uncommon for a frog. Corroboree frogs hide under logs and litter during their winter torpor. This is the physiological changes that affect the body temperature, metabolism, and water balance, which help the frog survive in winter, similar to hibernation. There are less than 50 mature adults left in the wild this is largely due to a disease called chytrid fungus, which caused a continuous decline since the mid 1980s. Along with this disease, habitat degradation, drought, weeds and feral animals are also risks to the survival of these frogs. There are two species, the Northern corroboree frog, which is classified as endangered and the Southern corroboree frog, which is critically endangered. The northern frog is slightly smaller and have thinner stripes that can be yellowish green instead of the bright yellow of the southern frog. This yellow and black colouring is bright to warm predators that the frog is poisonous. And their patterns are similar to fingerprints in that they are unique only to them. Some of these frogs also have vivid blue stripes on their underbellies. Most frogs obtain their poison through what they eat, but instead these frogs are able to create their own poison. The toxins they create are a poisonous alkaloid, which it will secrete from its skin to defend against predators. The corroboree frog can live up to 10 years in the wild and 17 years in captivity. They can take up to five years to fully mature. They lay a single clutch of 25 eggs each breeding year. The males can breed with multiple females each breeding season, and then they stay to look after the egg nest. These frogs grow to only three centimeters in length and only weigh three grams. 
Females are wider around the hips and larger in size than the males, which only weigh 1.5 grams. They eat small invertebrates, especially small black ants. These frogs also prefer to walk. Their legs are not built to jump and they have no need to as they live amongst swamp-like vegetation. Walking is just more efficient. I hope you found these slimy little frogs as interesting as I do as well as the other fascinating animals of Australia. Look out for more episodes from Study in Australia TV. Australia has so many unique and wonderful things to discover. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you again next time.